Hey guys, today we're gonna play a little game, 23 millimeters or 35 millimeters for the Fujifilm. I get this question all the time. And today we're gonna see some images and kind of get a sense of what the lenses can do. And even more importantly, can you even tell? So let's look at some images and figure out, does it really matter? Maybe you're stressing about it too much. So let's start by showing you it's not the size of the lens, it's how you use it. So here we have a 23 millimeter lens. I took a great crooked picture of my guitar. <laughs> and here with the same lens, 23 millimeters, I just moved in just a little closer. And you can see in the background, if you look at both images, how the background just gets a little blurrier if you get closer to your uh, objects. So when you're shooting with a prime lens, you base it's a little fun. You're basically using your legs to sort of uh, you know, compose the shot. And what's great about a prime lens is it is the distortion doesn't change. With a zoom lens, you know, you can go really wide and then things kind of get bent on the sides if you're trying to fit everything in. But if you have a prime lens, it forces you to kind of move back and keep, I know I'm guilty with a zoom lens to be a little bit lazy and shoot things at 24 millimeters too much. And I'm later disappointed trying to crop in, trying to fix. So that's what's great about a prime lens. Let me show you the difference between the 23 and the 35 and what they do. So these are the two lenses, 23 and th 23 on the left and 35 on the right. By the way, I'm gonna repeat this video with full frame lenses so that if you have a full frame camera and you wanna see what 35 and 50 does, I've already collected images for that video, so that's coming up next. All right, so 23 on the left, 35 on the right. You can see the biggest difference is 35 brings the background closer to you. So you can see the building is just flattened out a bit. And the 23 is just wider, you get more information. Now you have to look at a lot of photographs and, and some images, you know, we could talk all technical, 23, 35, compression, all that stuff, but it's gotta hit you here. Sometimes, you you have images that you like more because you don't realize it but you don't know why you like them but it could be that they're a little wider there are you like portraits that are wider as opposed to an 85 a 105 that's very compressed you sometimes have to go by what images you like and if i was taking a picture of the bike here and this was for an ad i kind of like the 23 a little bit more it just has a cooler look. Now the bike looks more normal <laughs> in the 35, but I'm a little wacky. So I like a little wackiness. All right, image number one. This image is a 35 millimeter. I'm across the street. This is in uh, Times Square and the chase, the bank in the background is coming closer to me with the 35 millimeter. Clinky, um, this right here is the 23, 23, a little bit more versatile. If you're, you know, holding <laughs> arm's length, this shot would be tougher with the 35. So this is 23 millimeters, 23, 35. What do you think? Portraits, you know, are a little tricky sometimes to tell uh, the difference, but nice bokeh in the background. This is the, I gotta check because I can't even tell. <laughs> uh, this is the 23 millimeter. I actually thought it was the 35 for a second. 23 millimeter, this was taken with the X-T20, and um, yeah, great colors, a little wider, you can see the background. Mmm, 23 or 35. This has a, a feel of, uh, what's his name, the Wes Anderson, accidentally Wes Anderson. I'll link up that book below if you wanna check that out. Uh, this is the 35 millimeter lens on the, uh, this guy. The XE2, baby. I love this camera. Very, very fun. Oh, also architecture. I'm an architecture photographer here. This is the 23 millimeter. And I always thought when I look back at this picture, I thought it was like 16 or 18. And I was so shocked that this was 23 millimeters on the Fujifilm X-T20. It just looks so wide. <laughs> and I think that's why this lens is versatile, you know. Okay, a little more travel photography, 35, 23, what do you think? Guessing, guessing, this is the 23 millimeter on the Fujifilm X-T20. Look at those colors, baby, 23 millimeter. And again, listen, if you, let's say you have the 23 and this is just a little too wide or you're a little too far, you can always, baby, check it out. You can always just crop a little bit. You know, if you want to make it look like a 35, <laughs> you can always crop. This is uh, Atlantic City. 
it's just like falling apart. But this is the 35 millimeter. And uh, this was the XE2 16 megapixels. I just love this camera. It kind of looks gritty and it's perfect for this. But this is the um, 35 millimeter. This is a landscape photo. The sky was angry that day. This is in Costa Rica. The light was just beautiful. But obviously this is the 23 millimeter because it's wide, right? You could tell. <laughs> you really can't tell sometimes, but... Okay, this is in Passaic, New Jersey, grungy buildings. By the way, I don't usually shoot things at an angle like this. I actually don't love this, but I put it on per uh, up there on purpose so I could talk about that. Just because when I was looking at my photos, I'm like, why did I take this? And probably because I saw the guy walking and I wanted to take an amazing street photo. <laughs> Not. But... I do have an image that's straight on, but I wanted to put this up here because I'm about to talk about this one, which is more like what I like to do, which is as if you're looking at a painting with straight lines. But anyway, this one right here is the 35 millimeter. So I'm across the street uh, and this is the 35 millimeter. So it's a little flatter, but you can't really tell. I don't think you can really tell uh, just from that image. But this one, you can tell a little bit more. 23? 35, this is the 35 millimeter on the Fujifilm X-T2. X-T2, what was this camera? This is the, this was the Fujifilm X-T3, and uh, this is the 35 millimeter F2, and this is the 35 millimeter F2. Anytime it's snowing, the WR lenses are fantastic for that, so uh, that's what I always put on the camera if I'm going out, and it's always the X-T2 or X-T3, which are weather sealed. Okay, old looking New York architecture, 23, 35. What do you think? Going once, going twice, 35 millimeters, correct. By the way, the lens is a 35. If you put a 35 millimeter on a full frame, you're gonna get more information. There's actually more in the scene. 23, 35. This one, foreground bokeh here, there's a plant. Nice little landscape image. Um, this is the 35 millimeter on the Fujifilm X-T3. Okay, little portrait of my daughter. Uh, 35, 23, what do you think? This one is the 35 millimeter lens. 35 millimeter lens is great for portraits. I prefer the 35 over the 23 for portraits. This was taken on the Fujifilm X-T3. Ooh, I like the street photo. This was taken with the Fujifilm X-T3 as well. 35, 23, here you can't really tell. Um, but this one is the 35, I guess I can tell. Maybe I'm starting to get it. <laughs> it's the 35 millimeter F2. And here I just crunched the blacks to make everything go into shadow. Uh, some toes. Looks compressed to me. Let me check, check. No, 23 millimeters. I thought it was the 35 for a second, but maybe you could see the bowing on the edges. I don't know. I can't tell. I can tell, and that's the point. The point is you can own either lens and work it, baby. Okay, this is the... Gosh, I thought it was the 35 for a second. Is it cropped? It has to be cropped. Let me see. Uh, called it. This was slightly cropped. Sorry, I grabbed this one without checking if it was cropped, but this is the 23 and it brings up that point. Like, you know, if it's a little too wide, the 23, you've got enough megapixels here. This is the Fujifilm. What is this? Okay. This was, of course, the X-T20. So this one, I, I knew something was off. It looked 35-ish. So you can make a 23 look 35-ish if you want it to crop. This was a bad portrait, but cool guy. We did like a photo walk way back, um, but I should have given him more light. But anyway, I wanted to show the background and if you shot someone, this one is the 23. 23, 35, uh, this does not look super sharp. I don't know. Uh, but this one is the 35 millimeter taken on the Fujifilm X-T3. Ooh, Atlantic City again, 23, 35. This one's a little compressed, so this is the 35 millimeter. Yeah. Making bacon. Ooh, that bacon looks crispy. The lens is crispy too. This is taken with the X-T2. And this one is the 23 millimeter. What? 
I remember this is when I had the 23 millimeter and I was testing it for the first time. So I was like photographing everything, but we were staying at a friend's house and I was like, oh, they made bacon for us. Can use that. 23, 35. Hmm. Again, we talked about if you're shy with street photography, get the 35, but this one is the 23 millimeter. So I just happened to be close here and uh, just like how the light was. And I mean, the only thing that's terrible about this picture, I can just see it right now, is the guy's head coming out of her head. So it's actually not great. But anyway, we're just showing you, not my work. <laughs> we're showing you what the lenses can do, okay? Don't judge. Okay, this was in Portugal. 23, 35. This is, of course, the Fujifilm X-T20 because I went to Portugal with a cheap camera on purpose. If you didn't see that video, instead of buying the Fujifilm X-T5, which I really, really wanted, I said, you know what? Let me take that money and go on a trip. So I'll post that video below. What is this one? This is the 35 millimeter, which is great for this stuff. Little compression here, complimentary color, action. Uh, everybody does this, this whole lock thing. <laughs> Everywhere you go around the world. Um, this is the 23 millimeter. Yeah, baby. This is the 35 millimeter. 35 millimeter. My boy, when he was little, before he got contact lenses. <laughs> and uh, this is 23, 35? 35. Better for portraits, in my opinion. Better for blurrier backgrounds, in my opinion. Wife, this was during COVID time, so they're like, we were working from home. She's actually working right on the computer, zooming. So I took a picture here, and this is the 23 millimeter. Portugal again, so that's the X-T20. And uh, if a little, I'm like hiding in the, <laughs> in the grass just to get a little foreground element. And this is the 35 millimeter, which is just so good. Uh, that lens, this is 35 F2 which if you're traveling is weather sealed. And if you have a weather sealed camera, I didn't. I had the X-T20, but it's just a great combo. Oh, a blurry selfie. I am not sharp here, but this probably means that I was testing, you know, the lens and, and it was camera without a flippy screen. Yes, X-T2, uh, but this is the 23 millimeter and this is my arm's length. So that's about as, you know, I, with the 35, it's a little too tight. So 23 millimeter. This is Hoboken, New Jersey, and a GameStop that was there that closed. Stores come and go in the neighborhood that I grew up in. It was just like, you know, so I always like to capture the stores. This is the 23. So the current, you know, if you're standing on like a New York City street and you're trying to take pictures of things, the 23 is definitely better. The 35 is just way too tight unless you just have more space, obviously. Chinatown, New York City. Little more space here. So this is the 35 millimeter, yeah, on the X-T2, X-T2. Chinatown again, across the street. So it is the 23 millimeter. Oh, I fooled you. I guess I wasn't across the street. If this is the frame, let me just check, make sure I didn't crop. No, we didn't crop. This means I was standing in the middle of the street. I wasn't across the street because across the street, you just get way too much. So that's the 23 standing in the middle of the street. And this is the 35 across the street. So you can kind of see that you do have to move your legs if you want to frame up the shot with the 23. With the 35, you can be across the street in New York City and be that kind of shooter. Mm hmm Oh, avocados. Uh, 35 millimeter, food photography, yeah. 23 or 35? 23 on the X-T20, yes. That was just the most beautiful sky ever. All right, shooting across two streets. This is very, very, like four lanes here. This is the 23 millimeter, so I got a lot of the buildings. This one is, again, across the street, 23, 35, 23. Now, this is an example of where I would have liked the 35, because for me, look, this was already cropped. Ooh, I cheated again. Not much, not much. But what I really wanted here in this shot was something kind of like this. And if we crop that, let me go a little higher here, er, er, for balance, something like that without the stupid car that's here, that would have been cool. And maybe the guy walking with these people, 
you can't always time everything perfect, but this is the shot I envisioned when I saw him across the street. And you still have detail, like you still have detail on him and the background. So with the 23 across the street, you can crop, you can still crop, especially now with these cameras coming out with 40 megapixels. So again, it's not a super, don't stress too much about which one to pick. You can, it can always work out. And it works the other way too. If you have the 35 and it's like something's too wide, you can always take four images and sort of stitch them together. Take a pano if you need. So um, there's always a way, there's always a way. Or you always have your phone. <laughs> Oh, there's the Fujifilm X-E2 again, 35 or 23. This is Atlantic City X-E2. And this one is, I had to check because I was like, eh, it doesn't look too wide. This is the 35 millimeter. And just a note on megapixels, like we just are getting more 40 megapixel cameras, 26, 33. This one is 16 megapixels, 16. And yeah, it's not as sharp as the other ones, but what ends up happening is in the background, since there aren't enough megapixels, you get more of a cool filmic look, uh, especially here I use the curve to kind of make it look a little, you know, I raise the blacks, but with less megapixels, you get that nice, you know, it's not like crispy sharp and then there's bokeh from the lens. It's, I think the lower megapixels helps that illusion a little bit more. Oh, my son and I, that's a nice. Um, so here he, I think he just graduated eighth grade or something. Um, and we got him, we took him to like his favorite Mexican place, some kind of chain or something. Uh, it's so funny. Um, but anyway, we are broad lit here, 23 or 35. This one is the 23 millimeter. So that works for portraits if you get close enough. Kudos to my wife here. You can see her <laughs> taking our picture. This is the 23 millimeter motorcycle picture. This one is. 35, very good, 35, I heard you there. <laughs> this one is 23 millimeters, definitely wider, less compressed. This one, you can see I'm going faster now. <laughs> so you don't get bored. 23 millimeter, 35, this one is the 35 millimeter, again, Atlantic City. By the way, it's okay to have both. So when I was in Atlantic City, I had both, the little 23 and the little 35. Uh, not a, this, no worries. Ooh, fall, autumn, X-T20, X-T20. This is the 23 millimeter, 23, obviously. And this one obviously is the 23. <laughs> you just zoom with your feet. I love food photography. I love taking pictures of my breakfast with my X-T20. And this one is with the 35 millimeter, which probably means you have to stand up at the table and kind of hold the camera up. Uh, with the flip screen up. And let's set the sun on this video. The last one is in Portugal, beautiful trip, X-T20, beautiful sky, 35 millimeter. In the end, it doesn't matter, folks. Just go out and shoot and move your feet. You ain't got to zoom. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys next time.